The first question is obviously about animalism. Uh, can you please, uh, and I know you've done that many times in many papers, but for the general audience, for our audience, can you please explain animalism briefly? Yeah, well, animalism is simply the view that you and I are animals. We are biological organisms. And surprisingly, that view is actually very unpopular, or quite unpopular amongst uh, professional philosophers who have an opinion about this. It's not so, I mean, it may seem rather obvious that we're animals. That's what you see when you look in the mirror. But uh, a lot of widely held views in philosophy are incompatible with our being animals. And so for that reason, it's, it's considered a minority, a minority view. Mm -hmm. uh, your famous argument for animalism uh, mm -hmm. looks like this. Uh, I see myself in the mirror. I see an animal. Uh, in the mirror, I'm an animal. But compare it with this. I see the Alps through the window. I see two mountains second, uh, through the window. And conclusion, the Alps are these two mountains. But the last conclusion is obviously, obviously false. Why then do you believe that the first one, I mean, I am an animal, is true? I don't think the fact that you see an animal in the mirror or that when you look at yourself or touch yourself, you touch an animal, I don't think that is by itself a very strong argument for animalism, for the view that you are an animal. I mean, the, uh, a Cartesian dualist, for example, who thinks that, you, that you're... That, uh, somebody who thinks that I'm entirely immaterial would, 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 be, would, would be unsurprised. Of course, they too will look in the mirror and see an animal, and that's what they would expect to see. The fact that I see an animal in the mirror or that you see an animal here shows, I suppose, at most that there is an animal that is intimately connected with me somehow. I mean, I can, I can move the animal's hands and I can feel uh, uh, through the animal's uh, 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 sense organs and so on. But that by itself is not very, not very conclusive. What I think is a good argument for animalism is to think about the animal's psychological properties. Think about is the animal conscious? I mean, we, mm -hmm. and it, it, it seems like if anything could be conscious, or at least if any material thing could be conscious, it would be an animal of some sort. So mm -hmm. if, if it's possible for any animal to have any mental property, or for any biological organism to have any mental property, then surely human animals are conscious and they can think, and they ought to have the same thoughts that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, but if the animal is thinking my thoughts, then it must be me. Tim? If well, you think uh, I'm not an animal, then, uh, then mm -hmm. you almost inevitably have to, have to deny that mm -hmm. a human animal can have mental properties. And right. I find that very hard, very hard to believe. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I think I'm an animal. I'll try to uh, probe the argument as well, because it certainly is a very challenging argument. Uh, well, actually, when I look at the mirror, I don't see an animal. I see a body. So, so maybe that I'm not sure something. what you mean by that. Uh, but I was, what's, what, what's the is, difference? Uh, what's the difference? Well, animal is a very uh, loaded term. It has a, a lot of like you know other things. I see a body that's moving, and I uh, and uh, perhaps it, perhaps the word animal has certain connotations. Uh, I, perhaps more, more carefully, you might say you see a biological organism, a living mm -hmm. thing. That is a mm -hmm. biological organism in the sense that biologists talk and, and zoologists. Use the, use the term. I'll try something. Right. Um, so, so something that is an animal or, or uh, 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 an organism in the same sense that a dog or a tree or a snail is an organism. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps the, artists, uh, the, the, the scientists are connecting your brain with a mechanic body so you can control it. And the body is sitting in the chair and thinking. So you look at the, you know, you, 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 you're saying, well, there's a robot sitting in your chair and the robot sitting in your chair is thinking. Therefore, um, you are the thinking, oh, well, you, you are the thinking being in that chair. Uh, the one and only thinking being sitting in your chair is a robot, hence, you are the robot. Would you <coughs> see that that's a, a similar argument? Or? I suppose I would disagree about your claim that the robot can think. Huh. If the robot is some, 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 some mechanical, Hmm. contraption made of metal and plastic, why should I suppose that that can think? Mm -hmm. uh, 
I mean, we've got good reason to think that living organisms can think and be conscious. I don't think we have any good reason to think that that uh, robots, or at least the, the robots that currently exist, mm -hmm. can think or be conscious. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, I could be mistaken about my claim that I am an animal is not something that I know a priori. I can't. I mean, I, I can know a priori that I can think. I can't very well deny that. Uh, but my claim that the thinking thing is an animal is based on my experience. And my experience could perhaps be badly misleading. It could be that I'm really uh, a brain in a vat or something like that, and, uh, and that all of these, uh, th these experiences of, of, of there being a living organism here are some sort of illusion. And maybe it's also possible that really I'm some sort of robot or some sort of inorganic thinking thing, and I only have the illusion of uh, 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 being a living organism. But I was, uh, I was taking for granted that there really is uh, an animal here, an animal in the biological sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether I've answered your question or not. Well, I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> in your recent paper, you have claimed that, <clears throat> uh, on the one hand, animalism doesn't say, I quote, uh, doesn't say that we are animals essentially, on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand, mm, again I, I quote, if we are animals, then we are necessarily animals. Uh, and it looks uh, like a contradiction for me. May you explain why it is not a contradiction after all? It's like if I say that four is greater than three, I'm not saying that four is an even number. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's necessarily true that four is an even number. Mm -hmm. It's like that. So mm -hmm. if I say I'm an animal, that, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm an animal essentially. Mm -hmm. Whether that, but that might follow from my being an mm -hmm. animal. It mm -hmm. follows just if every animal is an animal essentially. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's a second question. One mm -hmm. question is whether I'm an animal or whether I'm a non-animal. Uh, a second, an independent question, mm -hmm. which of course arises whether or not, whatever the answer to the first question is. The second question is whether animals are animals essentially or animals only contingently. Mm -hmm. Could a given animal have existed without being an animal? Uh, I happen to think that animals are animals essentially, but that, but, but that opinion is quite independent of my mm -hmm. view mm -hmm. that I'm an animal. Mm -hmm. And so we could disagree I about see. the I second see. one. In continuation, uh, another <coughs> question. <coughs> it looks, and now you confirm, just confirm this, uh, like you believe it's a kind of natural conclusion when we say that if we are animals, we are necessarily animals. Why then, the question is, why then it is not a natural conclusion to say that if a ball is yellow, it is necessarily yellow. I, I suppose it's, it's, it's false. It's uh, what I have just said. But uh, where I, I don't see any difference, formal difference between uh, uh, your opinion on animals and this proposition. I suppose when I think about the nature of an animal, I find it very hard to see how something that is in fact an animal could exist without being an animal. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, uh, I can't even conceive of how, let's say, I don't know, a, a giraffe mm -hmm. could be transformed into a, a, a plant or a piece of stone or uh, mm -hmm. something, something that's not, uh, not an animal at all. Uh, and, but when I think about the nature of a yellow ball, mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, then it does seem possible, uh, rather quite obviously possible, that, that the ball could have had a different color. Mm -hmm. In fact, we can change the ball's color. Uh, so it's just the difference between the proposition that all animals are essentially or necessarily animals and the proposition that all yellow things are, are all yellow balls or necessarily yellow. The mm -hmm. first one seems true to me and I think seems mm -hmm. true to most people. And the second one seems false to most people uh, mm -hmm. as well, to nearly everyone, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question <laughs> uh, on uh, your basic uh, ideas. Uh, mm, 
for just for gratification of course you claim that uh, we are animals or organisms but our organi organisms are composed out of vast number of living cells yeah. presumably uh, there are these cells are organisms as well and in actually in your first book you admit that mm, but uh, then it seems that our organisms are kind of societies of smaller organisms but again you claim that societies of organisms are not organisms themselves so it seems we are not organisms after all uh, why such a conclusion is mistaken? Well, I, I suppose that's a question, and quite a hard question, a, a, about the metaphysics of living things. Mm -hmm. And again, that hard question is entirely independent of, 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 of my claim that I'm, that I'm a living thing, a living mm -hmm. organism. Mm -hmm. uh, but to try and answer the question, I, I don't know whether cells are themselves organisms. I, mm -hmm. I, I said that in my first book because mm -hmm. Lenin Wagon said it, and he, mm -hmm. he seemed to know what he was talking about, and nobody ever said anything else to me uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. So I so I said it. <laughs> so you don't uh, agree with this now? Uh, well, I don't know. I'm agnostic. <laughs> I mean, most <laughs> most uh, biologists, I believe, or at least most philosophers philosophers of biology that I talk to, say that cells are not organisms. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who's right about this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's too hard a question for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think it really matters. I mean, it, 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 if cells are organisms, then I suppose that would mean that some organisms are composed of cells. Or, or, sorry, some organisms are composed of smaller organisms. Mm -hmm. And that is something that quite a lot of philosophers of, of, of biology are happy to accept. And I don't see any problem with that view. Uh, but, mm -hmm. You put it by saying that, mm -hmm. that a human animal is a society mm -hmm. of cells. Maybe the word society, not, not, uh, and you took that to imply that really uh, there are just lots of cells working together and yes, not a single right. organism that, that they compose. And right. Whether that follows maybe depends on what you mean by a society. Uh, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I don't know, the, the, the Russian society is uh, a living organism composed of lots of, lots of individual human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I think that's consistent with saying that, I mean, saying that the Russian, the Russian people don't together compose a, a, a vast and scattered disconnected organism doesn't commit me to denying that human cells arranged in this way compose an organism. I think those are different cases. But uh, what is the difference? What is, well, that's, yes, that's a hard question. Uh, 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 the, the, the beginning of an answer, I suppose, I, I mean, really, that's a, you're asking me, what does it take for some cells or for some smaller things to compose a living organism? And mm -hmm. that's a very large uh, metaphysical question. And I suppose it, it, it has something to do with the way they interact uh, and cooperate and so on, and the, the, the interaction of these human cells is very tight, and th 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 they, they depend on each other in a very literal way for their survival and so on, whereas the connection between the various people in Russia is, is, is much looser, and they're more independent. But that's really only a, only a very brief sketch of an answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's interesting. But uh, do you <coughs> admit that uh, there is a problem uh, here, or what? It not uh, very problematic. Uh, for you? It's a hard question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's it's a hard question about the metaphysics of organisms. Uh, but it's not. I, I, I mean, there are lots of hard questions, and a hard question isn't necessarily a problem. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's not. Insofar as it is a problem, it's not especially a problem for me. Uh, it's a problem for anyone who believes in the existence of multicellular organisms. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you believe that, th that there are such things as trees or such things as dogs, then y your question is as much a problem for, for you as it, is, as it is for me, I suppose. So please so. explain the personal identity problem in relation to animalism. Do you, by the personal identity problem, do you mean personal identity over time? Yes, or, 
perhaps, yes. I mean, so the, 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 persistence the, the word yeah. personal identity can mean lots of different yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, so, and, so, yes. and it's very common, um, unfortunately, for philosophers and non-philosophers to, mix them to mean yes, different things yeah. by, so, or to start talking about it without making clear what they, what they mean. This is a bit of a, uh, uh, a hobby horse of mine. I, <laughs> I, I, it makes me very frustrated that people, professionally, especially uh, philosophers who want to know better, start talking about personal identity uh, without making it all clear, either to themselves or to the audience, what, the, what question they're trying mm -hmm, to answer. Mm -hmm. But I think that animalism asks, answers at least two questions mm. of personal identity. But, so you are focused on, on which questions? Well, I suppose animalism is an answer to the question, what sort of thing is a person yes. or is a human person? Uh, is it a, 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 I think a person is an organism and the Cartesians th and, and, and the Platonists think that a person is, is uh, a simple immaterial substance and there are lots of other views. Nar narrativists uh, think that it's a story or something like I that. I don't think they think that actually, but yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think narrativists have any answer to the question yeah. of what we are. They just, that's, that's not on their radar. They, they don't consider that question. But Dmitry yeah. is one of the narrativists. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but I read your paper in the, you know, but, but anyways, so, but does animal, animalism answer the question of persistence? Does it okay. identify one person at one time <clears throat> with another person at another time? Animalism does not by itself answer the persistence question. Okay. The, the persistence question is about what it takes for a person to continue existing mm -hmm. as opposed to ceasing to exist. Yeah. Right. Uh, what does it take for a past or future yeah. being to be you or me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, animalism just says that we are animals and it doesn't answer that question. But, uh, or at least it doesn't answer it except by saying that uh, uh, what it is for you to persist is what it is for a certain animal to persist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so personal identity is animal identity, at least in the case of human people, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you ask, okay, what does it take for me or for a human person to persist through time? Uh, the animalist could rephrase that question by asking, what does it take for a human organism mm -hmm. to persist through time? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think the answer to that question, I, I think most people, whether they're animalists or not, would agree that the answer to that question is something to do with some sort of brute physical continuity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's animalism at least seems to imply that what it takes for you to continue existing is for your biological life-sustaining processes to continue in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose the, perhaps the important thing is that that seems to rule out any sort of psychological continuity view of personal identity, which is the dominant view in the literature <coughs> and has been the dominant view, I suppose, for quite a long time. So, so if I am concerned with a question, what it takes for me to persist in time, Am I also concerned with the uh, identity, with the persistence of persons, or identity of identifying different persons, or I'm also concerned with identifying persons and animals, and persons and things? If I'm interested in, in this question, what, is it, what does it take for me to persist? Am I interested, am I also interested in, in the questions of identifying myself with some, some other thing or animal? I don't think I've quite understood the question. Can you, mm -hmm. can, can so, you maybe so, say so, it again? So I am interested in the question, what it takes for me to persist. Yes. That's my interest. Then if I am trying to resolve that question, should I also resolve the question of persistence, of, of, of identifying in different times the persons and animals? Persons and things. I guess that's I'm, not not sure, important. I'm not quite sure what you mean by identifying people and things or people and animals. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just not quite understanding the question. Okay, so for, for instance, uh, when, when you are identifying yourself in future, would you, would you have to, sometimes in your future, you can be in, in vegetative, uh, vegetative state. Okay. So if I am concerned with personal identity issue, I would have to identify myself with I something see. that is in the vegetative I, state. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I'm, uh, okay. Or a so, person in the grave. Yes, so if, if you ask what does it take for me or for you to continue existing, yeah. uh, that doesn't 
necessarily presuppose that you have to continue existing as a person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it may be, depending on the answer to the question, that you could one day exist as a non-person, as mm -hmm. a vegetable or as a corpse, mm -hmm. or, or something else. So, I, I, I mean, the, 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 the traditional question of personal identity is often put by asking, what does it take for a person existing at one time to be the same thing as a person existing at another time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, taken on its face, that doesn't seem to be asking, what does it take for me to continue existing, mm -hmm. or for us to continue existing, or even for a person to continue existing? That seems to be asking, what does it take for a person to continue, exist, continue, continue existing and remain a person? Okay. And I think people ask that question, uh, what does it take for a past or future person to be me? They ask that question because they presuppose that I could only exist as a, as person, a person, that I'm yeah. essentially a person. I yeah. couldn't possibly exist without being a person. Yes. And I think that view, well, depending on what it is to be a person, that, that view is likely to be incompatible with our being, an, with our being animals. Right. That's what I th Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so Some I think th very often the question of personal identity over time is stated in a tendentious way, in a way that, that encourages or, 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 or is based on uh, a psychological approach yeah. to the whole to Okay, the whole so you topic. see that there's uh, uh, like a vicious circle or something, right? Because the, the question is asked in such a way where it actually... It's not a circle exactly, but the question is asked in a way that presupposes something that is incompatible with a whole range of answers to the question. Yes, it's, it's, it's asked in a way that presupposes a certain sort of answer, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it, it's not that that answer couldn't, it, it's not strictly incompatible with my answer to the question, mm -hmm. but putting the question in that way discourages people from even thinking about my answer to the question. Yeah. Uh, does animalism answer survival question? Does animalism tell me when I would survive, in which situations. Can survive. you say what you mean by survive? Do you mean continue, so, continue existing or continue existing well, and remain alive? Well, by survival, long? I mean, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, most people are concerned with surviving. It's their instinct. They want to live. Now, what exactly does that mean? It's in, I don't know, I'm scared to death. I would like to survive. By survive, you mean remain alive? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that a lot of common folks actually have the, the precise definition. They're just mm. interested. I think that the, the common desire is to survive. Yeah. I don't think they, they, they actually know exactly what yes. that means. Okay. Well, I, I, I guess uh, insofar as I'm not sure what you mean by survive, or what anyone right. means by survive, yeah. that I'm, I'm not sure what answer to give to the question of what <laughs> animalism implies for the question of what it takes for me to survive. Continue but living, then. I, I let's, let's, it, let's, yeah. it does imply that what it is for me to survive is what it is for this animal to survive, okay. uh, if that's helpful. I'm not sure whether that helps very much. What does it take for... Uh, some people oh, think that they can survive in heaven. A living organism to survive. Yeah. Yes. Well, some okay. people think that they can survive in heaven. Okay. And they, they okay. really believe it. They really want it, right? Yes. They, so they don't really believe in their animal to survive in the heaven. Okay. So, so, I mean, they could. Okay. But that doesn't imply it. Uh, so it, it, it's not obviously impossible for an organism, I suppose, to survive in heaven, but it. Uh, there are certain obstacles. I mean, we know what happens to an organism when it dies. Uh, it gets it. eaten by worms and it decays and all of its atoms become dispersed. And once that's happened, it's very hard to see how the organism could ever come back into existence. I mean, it, 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 the organism seems to cease to exist when it, when it, when it decays. And it's very hard to see how and that seems to be the end of it. Once the thing has been completely destroyed so that its atoms are totally dispersed and so on, it's hard to see how that very thing could come back into existence. And that's not just the case for animalism, but, but, but uh, uh, I mean, yes, the fa what happens in the grave is a problem for anyone who believes in life after death. 
right? There has to be some story about, I mean, it, it, uh, 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 about how it's possible for uh, a thing to die and decay and be eaten by worms or be consumed by fire or whatever, but still exist in a conscious state in the next world. That's a mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, now, and perhaps that mystery is the main reason by, why religious believers tend to be tend to be Cartesians. They they tend to want to believe that what we are is immaterial souls because they are not consumed by the flames or eaten by the worms. They aren't. They they don't decay. <laughs> Anyone anybody who thinks that we are material things or physical objects has a has a problem if they want to believe in life after death. But I'm not sure if it's more of a problem uh, for animalists than for other, for other materialists. Yeah. That was a, a very yeah, complicated so, answer. Uh, you, 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 you wanted a simpler answer, I yeah, think. Yeah, no, uh, I actually, <laughs> the next question was actually about your, your uh, you know, I've read your paper about afterlife and, and the preservation model. So, so personal identity debate has direct relevance to question of afterlife, in my opinion. So mm. uh, your position yes. on personal identity leaves you with the conclusion that laughter life after biological death is highly improbable, or is improbable. In one, of, in one of your papers, you state that the only way to survive would be by preservation, and that is also unlikely. So can you explain to, the, to our audience uh, why, why do you think that, you know, basically uh, just expand a little bit on what you've been saying. Okay. Uh, what I meant by preservation was that uh, the appearance that when you die, you are eaten by worms and you, all of your parts are dispersed and you are totally destroyed. Uh, the, the preservation is, is, is the thought that that is only an appearance and, and it's an illusion. And in fact, we're not totally destroyed after we die, but rather somehow our uh, structure or our nature or our, 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 our is, is preserved. Okay, so what happens in the grave is not, or, or what we observe happening in the grave is not what really happens, or, or it, it is only a part of what really happens, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so the most familiar version or uh, view of this sort is the Cartesian view, that you are uh, an immaterial soul. Okay, so when you die, it's your body, the animal, that is destroyed, but the soul continues to existing and in, in fact is entirely unharmed and it uh, retain the soul is what you are and it thinks and is conscious and it carries your mental life with it to the next world. So what we see in the grave really is what happens but it's not the whole story. There's something else that we can't see, namely the soul's being preserved and, and somehow making its way to heaven and that's what you are and there you are in heaven. Uh, if that sort of thing is possible, then life after death is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, 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 and maybe it's also possible for some sort of preservation story to apply uh, to animalism. Maybe the organism itself is not destroyed as it appears to be, but is somehow preserved. Uh, this, is, this is Van Inwagen's uh, uh, view. Uh, you also find it curiously in C.S. Lewis, if you read some of his novels. So, uh, 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 well, when he, when the, I, I can't remember what, 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 what book it is, but when the, when the hero in the C.S. Lewis uh, 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 novel uh, is, has to get from Earth to, from Earth to Venus mm -hmm. to do some job there, and God, and God has to get him there. God doesn't just sort of click his fingers and magic, magic, magically transform him discontinuously from, from, from Earth to Venus, but he puts him in a box and sends the box at, at high speed from the Earth to Venus, and when he gets there, uh, he's got a sunburn because the box was made of glass. <laughs> it's 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 a rather a curious detail, uh, but it, yes, it's 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 possible, I suppose, that when you die, uh, the animal does not decay, but the animal is rather uh, uh, fetched away whole, mm -hmm. and uh, to the to heaven, and arrives there. Uh, as an animal, healed presumably of whatever illness or injury it is that was th that killed it, so that it doesn't arrive dead. <laughs> and then the corpse that you see in the grave is some sort of counterfeit that's put there uh, uh, to give the appearance that uh, uh, that the animal is in the grave and, and decaying and being totally destroyed. 
-hmm. that's, that's a possible story. Uh, and that, I suppose, shows at least that our being organisms is logically compatible with life after death in, 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 in the next world. Whether it's a likely story or an attractive story is a further question, and that's one for the theologians to worry about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's imagine that your body is injured and your brain is transplanted into the vat. Uh, you're in the vat and your body is irreversibly destroyed. Uh, but you are conscious, or something is conscious, and have, has memories. So who is that person in the vat? It depends on what's happened to the organism. The, destroyed. Uh, if the organism is destroyed and, yeah, and, and, and the brain in, in the, the vat, grave, the brain in the vat is not the organism. And if there really is something in the vat, and, and, and the thing in the vat really is conscious, then yeah. it's 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 somebody else. It's uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, so it's uh, not you. It's not me. That's right. Logical consequence. Yes, Nothing I understand. Yes, it's really hard to buy that. That's <laughs> really hard to buy, especially if. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I suppose it's, it's, it's a case where the person has died and a new person has been created out of the remains of the dead person. Created? Well, nothing created. has been really created. Mm. Just, something has been subtracted. Well... Hmm. I mean... I'm, 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 I, I, it's, I know. It's, I uh, mean, the whole story, I mean, I, mean, I, I agree, this is, this is a strange consequence, but then it's also a, a quite a strange story, and I have no idea whether <laughs> it's, the story is, is in any sense possible. Uh, and it's, 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 uh, it's a rather strange story for a non-animalist as well. Uh, I, have to, I, mean, I have to say something rather implausible, okay, that, that, that the person in the, in the vat is not me. If you think the person in the vat is me, if you, if, if, uh, 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 then, well, first of all, you have to say that I was never an animal but something else. You have to explain why the animal was never a person, was never conscious and intelligent and so on. And you have to explain what the relation is between the thing in the vat and the person as she was before, uh, before she went into the vat. Okay. It looks like the thing in the vat is the person's brain, but that can't be right because the person wasn't a brain before she went into the vat. Presumably, the person had arms and feet, arms and legs, as parts, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, just, just why is the brain is not an animal? Sorry, why is the brain not an animal? Yeah. Well, if the brain in the vat is an animal, then it's probably the same animal. Well, it, it might well be the same animal as the one that died, or 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 or, or, or the one that the, the the animal that once walked and talked. In that case. Uh, it's you. <laughs> okay, but you think it's okay. not, the, the brain is not an animal. Well, that's what I'm inclined to think, but I'm not completely confident about that. I mean, Van Engelweger mm -hmm. thinks the animal, yeah. thinks, mm -hmm. thinks the brain, the brain, the, and the, and the mm -hmm. that would be the animal. Uh, and I don't know whether that's right. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was assuming that it wasn't right, that, because that's, that makes the problem harder. Uh, just a uh, small, small question, just for clarification. You mentioned that uh, just mentioned that <clears throat> uh, the idea that we are animals necessarily is just an opinion according to you. But can you uh, clarify the nature of this opinion? Is it an empirical hypothesis or something like that? Opinion on which it is based? I suppose everything I'm telling you is, is, is an opinion, in, in, in the sense that, <laughs> I I'm, see. I, I, I'm, I, that I'm not certain I, I, mm -hmm. of any of this, and uh -huh. I, I don't feel completely confident in any of this, uh -huh. and, 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 and I'm willing to, uh, to reconsider if consideration should mm -hmm. arise yes. uh, that challenge it. Uh, so you're asking, why do I think that, I'm, that an animal is essentially an animal? Yes, That's, it's just an opinion, you, you, you said. Well, I guess when I say it's an opinion, I mean I'm not... I, I, I'm expressing a certain lack of confidence. Uh -huh. I mean, that's how it seems to me, but uh, I'm prepared to change my mind if, mm -hmm. if need be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I guess the reason why I'm inclined to say that is simply because that's how it seems what I think about it, be, be, because I cannot conceive of, of, of a situation in which an animal 
whether a human animal or a giraffe or a tree or whatever could exist without being an organism. Mm -hmm. And what about afterlife? You just said that it is uh, possible okay. to, uh, um, to imagine. Ma maybe it is. I'm, I'm not sure whether imagining counts for very much. I mean, y y y maybe it, I mean, imagining in a sense is very easy, mm -hmm. but being able to imagine something in that easy sense doesn't tell us anything about, about, about whether it's possible, ah. I don't think. I mean, maybe I can imagine that, that that table is conscious and can think. So you, uh, But that doesn't show mm -hmm. that artificial intelligence is possible in any interesting sense, or, or, or that a thing made entirely of, of, of wood could be conscious. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there is no link bet between conceivability and possibility, according to you? Well, I was talking about imag uh, imaginability. I mean, yes, uh, I mean, you know, thing. all sorts of things happen in, in fiction, for example, that's, that, that, that's clearly impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, yeah, the fact that, that, that we can watch the film or read the story with, uh, 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 and suspend our disbelief, I think, doesn't show anything of, of metaphysical importance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I suppose, so, insofar as I cannot conceive of how something that of how an animal could exist without being an animal, that's at least a reason mm -hmm. to think that it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Okay, not a conclusive reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and likewise, insof insofar as I can conceive of how something could have been different, like how the yellow ball could have been a different color, that's a reason to think that it's, this is only a contingent, contingent state of affairs. But again, that's only uh, fallible evidence mm -hmm. for it. You yourself mentioned uh, that the term animalism has be, been coined by Paul Snowden, as far as uh, I remember. As far as, as, far as I know, it, it's, uh -huh. it, it's Paul's coinage, but yes. I'm, I, I'm not certain of that. But, uh, and he's animalist himself. How would you describe the main differences between your views, uh, between Paul Snowden and yourself? I, I, well, I think we have pretty much the same view, or, or at, at least we share the view that we are animals, mm -hmm. biological organisms. There's no, no dis disagreement about that. We, we, mm -hmm. we might disagree about certain other metaphysical questions, but mm -hmm. that's, that's probably so no, not, no big difference. Not important. Here. No, mm -hmm. we, we no. argue for the view in different ways. Ah, in different. And think about it. I mean, Paul th has a very different way of thinking philosophically from, from me. Mm -hmm. He is a very sort of very gentle and very subtle and uh, patient, indirect way of arguing. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's quite ingenious, but quite 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 different from <laughs> from uh, mm -hmm. from my style. It's just, it's just a difference in personality. I, I, I suppose it comes from Oxford. <laughs> I see. In one of your interviews, you said that you are a troublemaker, a critical <laughs> philosopher. But in your book, what are we? Um, you claim that your theories would be wrong, wrong if Kantian famous critical, again, critical approach is right. But again, there is no critique of Kant in that book. Uh, very complicated. But may you briefly explain what is the Kant chief mistake in your opinion? <laughs> oh dear, that's a hard question. Oh gosh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Well, the, the reason I said that that Kant's view is incompatible with my w uh -huh. with my theory, as you put it, is is is, is that uh, Kant denies the existence of of biological organisms. He thinks that right, the physical things are only appearances, and what what we really are is something that is completely uh, mm -hmm. non spatio temporal. Uh, 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 doesn't part participate in causation, uh, and so on. Something which we can't really say very much about. At all, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I suppose the reason that I'm not convinced of that is simply that I don't think Kant gave uh, a convincing argument for that mm -hmm. for that claim, and th that's a large question. I mean, mm -hmm. his, his argument seems to have been something like, "Well, uh, uh, things would appear to be spatio-temporal, no matter what." <laughs> Because just because of the, of, of the way we're built, we cannot possibly have any awareness uh, that isn't that wasn't in spatio-temporal form. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would appear to be spatio-temporal things uh, in any possible circumstances, uh, even if it were in fact false. 
Uh, and so we have no reason to believe it. Uh, and so somehow that means, us, means that we shouldn't believe it, but we should believe the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, and although I, it's not that I'm not worried about that argument, but I, I, it's, well, uh, it doesn't, just doesn't seem strong enough for me to, to, mm -hmm. to, to give up my belief the, in the reality of space and time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see, and connected questions, okay. the last questions, by the way, is the history of philosophy any help in your researches, or is it uh, rather an obstacle? Well, that's also a large question. Uh, I suppose the great philosophers of history had some good insights and made some bad mistakes, just as contemporary philosophers have. Contemporary philosophy is a, is a mixture of insight and mistake and confusion and model. So I suppose uh, some historical philosophers might say things that are, that are helpful and insightful, and, and, and others will say things that just sow confusion or or mistake. So I think that... Uh, but for you, personally. Uh, yes. I, uh, it's a hard question, and I'm, 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 I'm not a scholar of the history of philosophy, and, 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 and I'm embarrassed to admit, in fact, how ignorant I am of the history of philosophy. <laughs> no, I, I, I know some things, but, but, but uh, if I think about Locke, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, Locke gets credit, I suppose, for uh, putting questions about, about personal identity and people on the agenda. He, 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 he asked good questions, I suppose, uh, but I think he also caused a lot of confusion. I think uh, 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 when I read Locke's chapter on personal identity, I want to tear my hair out. I, just, I find it exasperating. Mm -hmm. the, the question is unclear. Uh, the, his answer to the question is unclear. Uh, he says things that seem to me ob just very badly confused. For example, his view that a person is not a substance. I, 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 cannot, I cannot understand that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, his view that some other th 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 that I could be or be associated with some other thinking substance, I can't make any sense of that, and I, don't, yeah. I cannot understand why so many contemporary philosophers take it seriously. In fact, think that Locke was right, more or less. Uh, it seems to me, uh, uh, although it's very thought-provoking and interesting, it seems to me shot through with 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 terrible confusion. So, uh, however brilliant Locke was, I, I think. Mm -hmm. He has a lot to answer for, in a way. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I suppose the, part of the reason why it was so influential is, is because it was brilliant and, uh, and insightful. So mm -hmm. I suppose that this is sort of a question about, about the history of philosophy generally, or maybe about how one philosopher is, is interpreted by succeeding generations. Mm -hmm. So one can hope that succeeding generations will learn something useful Mm -hmm. from the philosophers of the past but, uh, and, and, and not inherit too much confusion. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure it, it, it will be the same. It, if anybody ever reads my work in a hundred years' time, uh, which is unlikely, but if they do, I hope <laughs> th that they'll learn something useful uh, uh, and, and not just inherit too much, too much confusion from me. <laughs> but uh, in the end, is the history of philosophy any help to you or not? Or it would be better if it doesn't exist at all. Just an obstacle. I'm not sure, really. <laughs> I mean, I don't look at the philosophers of past centuries for solutions to the puzzles that mm -hmm. I've got, because I, I don't find it helpful in that sense, because I, th th they tend to be asking different questions from, from the ones that I'm asking, and they're quite hard to understand anyway. Well, I find them hard to understand anyway. Uh, mind you, I find a lot of contemporary philosophers hard to understand as well, but the, uh, uh, as you go back in time, it, those problems are simply, simply multiply. So I suppose I, I don't find it so helpful, though I am grateful, of course, for the, the, the causal influence that mm -hmm. they've had. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, we couldn't be doing sophisticated good philosophy now in the 21st century unless a lot of philosophers in the past had uh, been doing a lot of philosophy and, also, and, and made a lot of mistakes uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. And maybe last uh, brief question. We just talked about history. It's now time to ask you about the future. 
What is this? Uh, tell us something about your plans. <laughs> my, oh dear, my plans. I, 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 I'm not very good at making plans, I have to say. Uh, your I hate, future I, I hate it when, when, when people ask me about my future <laughs> because, because very often I don't have any or not very much. <laughs> I, I don't plan my life out very much at all. I tend to take things as they come. And th th this is a character flaw in me, I'm afraid. Uh, I tend to drift through life. And mm -hmm. Interesting. This see what happens. So it, it was worse to ask anyway because uh, we now know yes. your, about your character okay. more. Yes, okay, good. Well, I've, I'm, I, I've, I, I, I've been asked and I've agreed to uh, co-author a book mm -hmm. on uh, whether we're made of matter. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Siegel is the other author, uh, author mm -hmm. at the Hebrew University. So th that's going to be a sort of a, a popular book for, for a student audience. Uh, and I, I've been thinking about questions to do with death. Mm -hmm. and other metaphysical questions. I've, I've, I've sort of been trying to get away from personal identity because I, I, I've, 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 I've been working on it for too long <laughs> and I fi find myself repeating myself a lot. But I, I, I keep getting asked by people to say something or write something or come to a conference or whatever, and I find it hard to say no when people want me to come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, partly because... Well, they want me to come, and, and, and because I, I think I have useful things to say, and because I think a lot of other people, people other people, so, some people are confused, and I think maybe I can, maybe I can help them. Uh, uh, I don't want today's students to learn their philosophy from, or to learn about personal identity from the other people who are confused. <laughs> I'd rather have them learn it from me, uh, not because I'm vain or because I'm sure that I'm right, but 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 because uh, I think it's at least clear. Fairly clear what I'm trying to say, uh, and I suppose everyone thinks that that they're more likely to be right than the other people. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yep.